It's been an unusual season, but very gratifying for our coaching staff, myself included, um, our players. Uh, you know, it starts with the, the three young men that have played quarterback for us. I think the best way to describe it is sometimes when you have a, a quarterback controversy or two or three quarterback system, team members can pick a side. And that hadn't happened with our team, and we've been very fortunate. And I think the reason why is because all three players are unselfish. Uh, they have good families. They were raised right. Uh, they bought into the system. And the supporting cast has been very good. So that's been its own soap opera for the most part, but a good one. And then defensively, um, I feel like this is the best defense that we've had since I've been the head coach here. I thought that coming into the season. We started out slow. Uh, I'm not sure why other than we weren't, we weren't healthy in the first month. Um, we had guys that, that played on Saturday that didn't practice very much during the week. And then Lindell Johnson was out for about five weeks, however long he was out. And it limited us on the packages that we had available, available on a Saturday. I think they've gotten better over the last month. Uh, their, their chemistry as a group has been uh, very impressive in my opinion. Uh, and then in special teams, we, we were just okay and we played very poor at Kansas State. And then the last couple weeks we've been better. Uh, so. The, the coaching, the growing that uh, that's taken place with this football team has is, is really been an enjoyable experience for our staff. One follow-up question. I felt like the Texas Tech game, I mean, every week's important, but I felt like the Texas Tech game was very pivotal for the Cowboys because you go to Oklahoma, to Baylor to close out the season. Did, do, you, did you, do you agree that it was a really pivotal, pivotal game? It was, and I think that when you play at home, uh, you, you really have to take advantage. Uh, Percentage will tell you that. The history of the game will tell you that you have to take advantage of your home games. Going on the road and playing Oklahoma, wherever they're ranked now, I'm sure they're in the top 12, 10 or 12 of the country. Uh, and then we saw what Baylor was capable of last Saturday night. Uh, but we've gone through this now. You know, we were on a a difficult task here. We talked about it five, six weeks ago after that last open date that we were going to be on a, a really difficult run. I don't know how many teams we've played this year that have been ranked at one time or another. Somebody knows that. Uh, but we're playing Oklahoma, who obviously is ranked very high, and Baylor has been ranked throughout the season, uh, early in the season. I don't know if they're ranked again or not. but. Um, Every game's important, but you certainly want to take advantage of your home field. Coach, Zach Craig earned a special teams player of the week on there, which is the third time in the last four weeks you've had a player earn that. What does that say about your special teams? We've gotten much better. Um, the players have bought into the system and um, in our game plan each week. Uh, and, and it comes down to them. They, they have to want to do it, and we have to put him in that position. And um, he, did a, he did a really nice job last week. Um, obviously, blocking two punts is hard to do in one game, much less, or even a season for the most part. But uh, Zach likes to play football. It's important to him, and he worked hard and studied tape and paid off for him uh, against Texas Tech. Coach, a little bit more on the special teams. Uh, with the impact the special teams has had the past couple of weeks, what a what impact can you expect from a guy like uh, Quinn Sharp in the next couple of games? Well, he needs to continue to play like he has over the last four years here. Uh, he's, in my opinion, the best special teams player in the country. Uh, and there's some good ones out there. Most notably are the ones that return punts and kickoffs. But uh, what he's accomplished here with his kickoffs and his punting and, uh, and his field goals, PAT field goal work, is. Uh, it's pretty impressive over a, a number of years. Having both played and, and coached in this game, obviously, can you, in, in your own words, kind of talk about what makes this rivalry so special to you? Well, I said this morning on, on a radio show that we don't have professional football in the state of Oklahoma. And so this is uh, the big game. It's people that go to work, uh, either wear orange or red, uh, they pick a side. and. The players know each other from high school football. Most of the players on our teams either come from the state of Oklahoma or Texas. They're familiar with each other. 
the coaching staffs know each other. Uh, I think that's why it's different than the other rivalries across the country. Coach, uh, Quinn's a great example. He kind of monitors himself, but several of the other players that were out there speaking with the media, uh, Daytuan Lowe, uh, Kai Staley, they mentioned how fresh they feel. Even though it's this late in the year, you know, Lowe was saying, man, I feel good, my legs feel good. And, and again, they go back to the practice habits and the way you, you guys operate. It, it keeps the players, you know, pretty good this late in the year, which is tough to do. We don't practice very much, uh, much less in the latter part of the season. We're not out there very long, and we hope that the game plan that we have in for each week and the amount of reps that our players gets enough for them to, to be sound on Saturday. But uh, we just don't practice very much. We try to keep them as fresh as possible. Mike, everyone likes to talk about your three quarterbacks and how that's impacted your season. But I'm going to guess if your defense hadn't got better, you wouldn't be in this spot right now. That was huge for you guys to get them to start playing better, wasn't it? They, they really have. Uh, you know, and it, it seems like just yesterday, but you go all the way back, it's really been five or six weeks ago that our defense started playing much better and, and they've grown as a team. Uh, I think our coaches have done a great job. Uh, giving them a, a chance for success. But more importantly, they're playing with excitement, enthusiasm. Uh, when they celebrate, they celebrate together, not as individuals. And uh, they've, they've made a big impact on our team. If you, if you look back over the last four or five games, there's times when our offense was playing just OK and our defense kept us in the game. And then there's times when our offense was playing really well when our defense was struggling. And then special teams has picked it up in the last few weeks. When you review on tape, how much of the improvement defensively has been tapping into the reserves and getting more guys involved? For instance, Ryan Simmons had a, a huge game out there on Saturday. I think it's really important. Uh, you know, Bill Young deserves a lot of credit for uh, his ability to work in uh, players' backups, uh, for the most part, that really aren't backups for us because we like to play so many guys. But he wants to work them in to keep players fresh. Uh, not only physically, but mentally. You said this was your play, maybe the best defense in your tenure here. At the beginning of the year, is this kind of what you envisioned for these guys? I, I felt like that they would have a really good year on defense because we had more depth than we had had over the last, well, seven years that I had coached here. Uh, we had some veterans in the secondary. We were we were slow to get going in the secondary for the most part, for a few reasons, but. Uh, up front, we've been good. Um, our two interior tackles uh, have been really good, in my opinion. And then we've been able to rotate some of the other guys in and keep them fresh. But for the most part, they run well side to side. And we've had some instances where we haven't tackled very well. But overall, uh, it's been a good tackling defense. Michael, you have <coughs> the bell dozer out there, been any kind of creative names circulating toward uh, your boss, any type of. Specific well, I, I don't know when the belldozer got his nickname, but I'm guessing it was uh, not after the first game. I could be wrong. <laughs> Hadn't followed it that close, but uh, JW has got uh, got a ways to go. But he was a, a good lift for us Saturday. It was uh, nice to see him back and running full speed. Um, he practiced well last week for the first time in about a month. And so uh, it's good to get him in the game. Mike, this series, it's unusual because normally you kind of go, you're there, the next year you're here, you know, last two have been here you. in Stillwater. Do you do anything extra f to help the guys who haven't been through a game down there in that atmosphere to kind of help, help them get prepared, or what can you do? Well, there's really no substitute for experience and maturity. Um, a number of the guys on our team have been there, but some of our key players – haven't played there because we played two years in a row here. Uh, we hope that the experience that they've gained playing on the road over the last few years in big games uh, will help them play Saturday. Uh, there's not really anything we can do to get them prepared. Uh, they, they have to remember that once we get there and cross the white lines, it's 11 on 11. Um, we, we work on offense with sound and loud noise. So, uh, I feel like they'll play fine. I, I don't. I don't think it'll be something that will affect them more so than just what home field advantage would be for any team.
Mike, what do you make of this choo-choo clinch help situation? Well, I was unaware of it until uh, last night. Uh, I was walking through the house and my kids had the TV on and uh, I saw it and I didn't even know that it was him until they showed a picture of him in the corner. So I, I was unaware of it, but uh, whatever train he's driving, I'm getting on. <laughs> interesting to you how something like that has seemed to catch on. And, you know, oh, I think it's interesting, but not to, nowadays it doesn't take much to get something going. Um, in fact, I don't know where the train came from. Does anybody know where the train came from? I know there's one in Enid that goes through the middle of town, but there's train tracks you have to cross getting into town. Um, I don't know. Anybody know where it came from? There was an internet posted. Oh, internet. I got you. Twitter? Beautiful. <laughs> the guy used to have to go off in a, in a press conference to get attention. Now he just... <laughs> Yeah. Hey, just play good for a couple games. There, there's, an open, there's an open letter that was written from him to the OSU fans by somebody else, but you're going to need some editing and definitely wouldn't take it home to the kids. He wrote it? No, no he didn't write oh. it. It was written for him. I don't think Clint could ever have written that. I got it you. It would take him 10 years. <laughs> yeah, you guys are getting way over my head now. You're using him in first person and second person. And <laughs> Twitter world is okay. Speaking of a press conference, you see uh, Les Miles at a press conference at all? Have you? Uh... You know, John, I'm disappointed that I haven't. Um, but be Todd Munkin shared it with me Sunday morning, and I don't know how I missed it because I stayed up pretty late watching games and did pretty good for for me, and I did not see it. Um, and Todd had asked me about it, and I said I didn't see it, and he texted uh, Les. Um, that uh, he watched it and enjoyed it and something else. I don't know what he said. And uh, he said, tell Mike that uh, he needs to watch it. He'd be proud. And uh, I, I will do that. I just hadn't got to that yet. What's, has Bedlam changed uh, here? I mean, people are talking about it's become so much more competitive in the last 20 years and here in the last 15 especially. I mean, do you notice a big change. I mean, there were a lot of competitive games in the 70s and 80s, but now there seems to be a whole string of them where... Yeah, I don't think any we could argue that, you know, Oklahoma State's been on the on the bottom side of that for, you know, if you want to go back over 30 years or however many years. Uh, and we, we've become more competitive in the 80s and then in the 90s when when we were struggling here after the probation years, there was some separation again. And then since then, uh, what would be probably about 2,000 on. It's been fairly competitive. Uh, and if both teams are playing well, uh, both teams are ranked uh, and have had good seasons, then uh, it's always a more enjoyable game for the state. And so I would have to agree over the last 10, 15 years, the game's been more competitive. For those uh, who aren't around football and understand how much time is committed to that during the season, can you explain to them like how it is like where you can go months without even talking to your brother just because the season's going on and what's that going to mean to once again play again against them for who knows how long now? I think that people have to realize during the season I can go months without talking to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and some of that's based on how well we play and it's not my decision, it's hers. Uh, uh, our schedules uh, are the same time. Uh, you know, we come in at 5.45 or 6 in the morning. They come in at 9 or 10 in the morning. You know, we go home at 10 at night. They go home at 4 in the afternoon. So, uh, you know, Kay and I are on the same schedule, and uh, it's hard for us to, uh, to talk. But uh, I was being facetious. You didn't catch that, did you? <laughs> uh, we, we come in and go home at the same time, and he recruits and I recruit. And uh, because we have kids the same age, They've done a better job of keeping us in touch than we've done than we have because they're always coming to each other's coming to our house and things like that. So, but it's just the way it is during the season. There's a lot going on. It's just not much time to talk on the phone. Speaking of family, with it being a holiday week, when you think back about Thanksgiving, what's a favorite memory of yours growing up? Well, Thanksgiving's always been my favorite holiday because you get together as a family. You can eat. There's uh, there's games on TV. 
Uh, and then uh, I love Christmas, but when you do gifts, it just takes up so much time and messes it all up because there's so much going on. Uh, Thanksgiving, you just get together and enjoy each other and eat. And uh, it's always been a special time for us. And, you know, we'll have it again uh, this year. In fact, it's going to be at our house. And uh, so it's it's been, well, uh, I've been coaching, uh, well, been involved in college football for 25 years now almost. And so we've had 25 years of Thanksgiving. And even back in high school, it was during playoff season. So uh, it's always been football and turkey. Does it make it harder when a game like Bedlam is, is coming up a few days later? Do you have to make yourself a lot that time for, for family? Oh, not really. Uh, we don't, I mean, it, it, there's only so much you can do. And when you get to Thursday afternoon, for the most part, it is for Oklahoma State. I don't know about Oklahoma, but our work is is finished, and it's just a matter of um, finally tuning what we need to, to prepare for the game. And to a certain extent, if you can't get away for four hours, you probably got too much going on, and you got too many plays to start with. Is Thanksgiving one of the best days of the year also to practice football? Because when you're in high school, mm -hmm. it's your goal to be practicing at Thanksgiving. And, and I know your practices usually are in the morning so guys can get away, but is that a fun practice? I think so. Thanksgiving always means in high school you're making a run for the state championship. And then uh, it's been bedlam here for a number of years. Um, and, uh, you know, it just for, for us in our profession and for you guys who follow it, it you know, it's football and, and food. And um, there's never enough games on television. You know, you just kind of want to sit around and eat more food and watch TV. So uh, it's always been a, been a fun holiday. Do you like quarterbacks on, uh, on Thanksgiving weekend, or do you like it where it was last year we had the weekend off and a week later? I don't know that it really matters. Uh, it's getting ready to, to go back to the way it was um, in the future, I think, with, uh, with what future scheduling looks like. Um, either way, it's a fun week for everybody. For us, it's a week of preparation, and, and we have to get ready to play a game. Uh, and um, however it falls, it falls. It really doesn't make a difference to me. Talking to quarterbacks, you guys seem to have a new fan favorite. You know, just the way it's worked out every week. Oklahoma's had the same quarterback for four years, but maybe underappreciated by some of his fans. Have you ever had a player like that or, or seen another guy that's put up a lot of numbers, maybe underappreciated in his career? I don't think there's any question that, uh, one, he's had a, an a unbelievable career. He, he's had to have played in 40, mid-40s or something. I don't know how many games he's played in, but. He's got to play in a lot of games because I don't remember him getting injured. Uh, and he's been durable, and uh, they've had a lot of success. And when you stick around as long as he has, they're always going to find something wrong. They're always going to going to say, well, we wish we had this or wish we had that. And then when they depart, they'll say, golly, I wish we'd have had him back. And uh, that's just my opinion on that on that position. You see that a lot at the quarterback position.